Hey y'all, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. Today I'm super excited to be sharing with you guys a multiple looks plus review of a new palette from Midas. This is the Midas Cosmetics and the Basic Bees Perception Palette. Now this is in collaboration with another influencer, the Basic Bee. I will leave her link down below, but this is the palette she did in collaboration with Midas Cosmetics. And I received it right around the launch day, but I haven't been able to film until now because I've had family in town. So I decided instead of doing like a first impressions or anything like that, I'm going to bring a multiple looks video to you guys and share with you guys a full in-depth review on this palette right here. In case you were looking at it, considering it, and would like to hear my thoughts on it, we can get right into it. And then of course, multiple looks for you guys to get inspiration on the type of looks that you can create and all the looks that I created, or most of the looks that I created with this palette. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So as I said, this is going to be a multiple looks video. Typically I do three looks, one palette plus review, but today I want to change it up and give you guys a five total look. So you guys are going to get some extra looks. I wanted to be able to use every single shadow in this palette and show you guys me using every single shadow in this palette. So between all five eyeshadow tutorials, you're going to get to see each and every one of these shadows used on my eyes in some capacity. And then once I do all that, I'll come back at the end to give you guys my overall thoughts and impressions on this palette. And overall, if I think it's worth it with this palette, do I like the quality? Is it stand up to previous palettes I've tried from my is all that sort of thing. So yeah, that's going to be the main part of this video. I did want to say really quick, if you guys would like to see me compare this to other palettes in my collection, definitely let me know that down below in the comments. I didn't want to do it for this video because I felt like it would get a little too long and lengthy and drawn out. And I feel like those videos, I mean, I've done it in the past and they just get so very long around the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to try to split it up. If there is interest, I will come back and do a look where I swatch this palette against any similar palettes I have in my collection, as well as doing at least one look on camera with you guys using this palette and then whatever content palette that I found in my collection. So let me know your thoughts. I do know that the biggest one that came to the top of my mind was the Club Nebula palette, which is also an influencer collab palette. I thought that was kind of funny. But this is from Kaleidos Cosmetics. It was in collaboration with Angelica Nyquist. And I don't know, I feel like there are a lot of those bright colors that stand out and then a lot of the shimmers because they're more of a, uh, like a sheer-ish type of shimmer that's super sparkly. Also, I do see a lot of similarities. So that's definitely the one that's at the top of my mind. But if you guys are interested in seeing that video, I'll definitely go through all the palettes that I have back here and make sure there aren't any other ones and if there are I'll be including it in that video so that's going to determine on how many comments I get down below in the comment section so if you do want to see that make sure you leave a comment and say that you do and I will get to it super fast or as fast as I'm able to so yeah with that said I think we can get go ahead and jump right into the tutorials if you haven't ever seen one of my three looks one palette type of videos I do want to go ahead and like let you guys know in case you are someone who tends to pass over them I like to give a lot of reviews on the eyeshadows specifically when I do my tutorials. So instead of just saying like, hey, you know, I'm putting this shade here, that shade here, I try to go a little in depth on how the shadow, that specific shadow worked for me as I'm using it in that eye look. So if you like those type of reviews where it gets really nitty gritty, you'll be able to hear my thoughts on every single one of these shadows in this palette. But yeah, let's go ahead and break over and do that. And then when we come back, I'll give you guys my overall thoughts and reviews as well as swatch this out on camera for you guys. All right, so jumping right in, I am taking that life shade and I'm packing that yellow into my crease. As you can see, it's a little bit of a sheer type of yellow, but since I went on and pressed it on first and then started to blend, I feel like it, you know, built up nicely and I was happy with the pigmentation that I was able to get. Following that up, I went in with Open Mind. I was so excited to try this shade. Again, a bit of a lighter or like a thinner shadow, like it's a very thin shade. So you can see that at first I started to blend and then I noticed the thinness, so I started to pack it on a little bit and press it in before going on and blending it. And that that works best. Moving on, I'm taking Rustless and I'm packing this on the outer corner. As you can see, it's very nice and pigmented, a very dark color. So again, you know, the shade itself, I would still describe as a thinner type of formula. Like the formula itself feels and appears on your eyes pretty thin. However, the shade is nice and pigmented and packing it on definitely helps it stand out and like you get the most out of the shadow packing it on. Moving over to the shimmers, I decided to take Psyche or Psyche and I packed that on my inner corner. This is a more transparent type of topper shade so you could put it on very kind of you know just very uh, sloppily and just press it around and get more of a scattered kind of uh, reflective look but I wanted to get as pigmented as I could get it with this shade so I'm packing it on with a very dense brush and take and you can definitely get there it's gonna still have a little bit of a thinness to it but the color itself because it's such a beautiful kind of iridescent maybe even dual chrome multi-chrome or something it builds up nicely and is very blinding as you can see as I move my head around it is a very blinding shadow so very beautiful next up I took motive and I'm packing that on 
on the rest of my eyelid. I just wanted to see what these two would look like together. And as you can see, I started to do it just with the brush, but it was, I don't know, just taking a little bit too long. I decided to just take my finger and pack it on. That was definitely the way to go. And this shade itself, it is a lot more pigmented. It has more pigmentation to the color itself than the previous shade did. Moving on to my brow bone, I'm just taking Reality and I'm just kind of setting my brow bone with it. This shade is a very thin white. Uh, it's definitely one that if you really wanted to stand out and pop, you'd have to really pack it on and give it a white base. But for the purposes of cleaning up my brow bone, it did the job just great. Moving to my lower lashes, I'm just putting a little bit of that dark green and smudging it right against my lower lashes and then taking the bright green open mine and blending and kind of diffusing that all out. And then for my inner corner highlight, I went ahead and used this highlighter by Natasha Denona. And that is gonna be the final look. And overall, I really love this look. You guys know I like a good green look. The green and yellow combined are definitely a favorite of mine. And I was very happy with how easy it was to get the look. As I said, the shadows themselves, the matte shadows are a very thin type of formula. However, if you go on with my pecking motions, I had no issues working with these shadows. And I was very happy with the final results. And the shimmers themselves are beautiful. I feel like there's not a huge difference between Motive and Psyche, but that is the only complaint I have with the shimmers. They're gorgeous and they held up so beautifully on my eyes. I was very happy with the wear time. And jumping right into the next look, I'm taking that orange matte and I'm packing that on my inner corner. And I'm just taking some time to build it up to the intensity and pigmentation that I like. And this shade I feel like is very bright. This is gonna be a theme with all the mattes in here, but the formula itself is very thin. However, the pigmentation of the shadows is very nice and they're easy to work with. Moving on, I'm taking that next shade and blending it on the outer corner. This shade is a lot darker, so I feel like it just, it was a lot easier to stand out. Again, a thinner formula, a thinner shadow. There's not like a butteriness to them, but as you can see, it's nicely pigmented and it blends out really well. It blends into other shadows really well. Very happy with that shade. And then following that up, I'm taking that next shade implode there and I'm packing that on my outer corner. And look at how beautifully dark and pigmented this shadow is. It is so nice, so deep, it almost looks black. However, paired with this look, you really do see that plumminess of the shadow itself coming out. And as you can see, the color itself is very intense. However, it blends out very nicely and I was very happy with how effortless that blend looked going from such a dark shade to my crease shade, which is a much brighter color. For my shimmers, I decided to take that shade Deep Space and I'm packing that on the center of my lid. This shade is a little bit of a subdued type of shimmer. At least it looks very much so in the pan, but it definitely looks a little bit more unique and special on the lid. And anyway, for the inner corner, I decided to take Quantum there and I'm packing that on. This is a very chunky shade and I had a lot of difficulty getting it on my lid without it just kind of falling everywhere or just not really wanting to stick. I kind of had to really pack it on my brush and you know put a lot on there and then just kind of smooth it out from there because trying to do it little by little to kind of you know prevent fallout wasn't working. It was taking way too long and wasn't really wanting to stick and transfer. So that was definitely a way that I got it to work. Anyway, moving past that, I decided to not do a wing liner. So I'm just taking that darkest shade and creating a kind of a faux wing with the blend. And then moving to my lower lash line, I am taking that same shadow and just smudging it right against my lower lash line to get it nice and dark. And then following that up, I'm taking that infinite shade and I am blending that right along that darkest shade and just kind of you know bringing some lightness to that dark shade and blending out the darkest shade the shadow works beautifully had no issues with it and for my inner corner i'm taking psych again and i am blending that into my inner corner and this is such a beautiful inner corner highlight but yeah that is going to do it for this second look i really liked how this one turned out i wasn't really sure you guys know i'm not into pinks and purples but i was definitely a fan of this look and it was so much fun to wear and then as far as wear time i had no issues whatsoever there was a little bit of transfer up into my crease but honestly not a whole lot it was very minimal and you know besides that no creasing no fading of the shimmers no fading of the mats all around very very pleased with how these performed All right, so for my next look, I wanted to embrace the neutrals. And so I'm taking that shade right there and I'm blending that all into my crease and just kind of building it up and blowing it out. I wanted this to be a very soft, like I said, I'm going for very neutral. This shadow itself, I did start out kind of light-handed because I wasn't sure how intense I wanted it to get, but it definitely took a good amount of building to get it to the intensity that I was looking for. And then once that was on, I followed that up with natural on a really tiny detail blending brush and I'm packing that right in. This shade is very dark. Like I went in with just a light hand to pick up some of it and boy, like you see that picture pigmentation right there and also it's blending on top of you know the shade that I already put down really nicely and I just went back and forth with both of these brushes both of these colors to get this blend how I wanted it they blended together beautifully next up I'm taking that implode shade once again and packing this on my outer corner for the shimmers I decided to use that shade in the corner entity and I'm packing it on the center of my lid and this shadow is very beautiful it has a lot of sparkle to it and it's got just a subtle little purple amount of purple to the shimmer that's absolutely beautiful it goes on really nicely without any help 
and I was just very pleased with how this looked. It's very subtle, but it's a very beautiful shade. And this was definitely a perfect pairing for a more neutral look, but I did want to do a little pop of something, a little pop of me in there. So I went ahead and took that green motive and I'm putting this on the inner half of my uh, eyelid. Little pop of color for me with this look and yeah, maybe not the most neutral look that you can get with this palette, but it was a very neutral look for me. Once again, I've already said I really like the shimmer. It's definitely my favorite shimmer in the palette. It has so much sparkle reflect. It is gorgeous. Then just for my lower lash line, I'm taking that implode shade again and smudging it out. This tends to be what I feel like my lower lash line is always so boring to watch. But anyway, smoke that out right against my lower lash line. And then I'm taking that first shade that I used and just using that shade to buff and blend out the deepest shade that I put right against my lower lash line. And this worked really well. It was very easy to get it to kind of buff and smoke out. For my inner corner, once again, using that dual chrome monochromatic. I don't know what type of reflect it has, but it is gorgeous, whatever it is. And I'm putting that for my inner corner. And that is the look. That's the most natural look that I created with this palette and I thought it was really pretty and yeah there was a nice sprinkling of browns in here that I thought went really well with the shimmers in this palette and this look once again held up so nicely on me the shimmers there's a lot of um, sparkle reflect with these shimmers both of the shimmers that I use today and they do transfer just a touch up into my brow but honestly not that much I do use a glitter glue but the transfer isn't that bad there's no creasing with these in on my lid which I'm always very happy with and there was no fading of the mattes in my crease throughout the day so where time on these per usual when it comes to Midas very very pleased okay next look I wanted to start using those pinks and I took evolve and I'm packing this and blending this into my inner crease area and I'm using it on a fluffier brush and as you can see it has no problems you know showing up and standing out again it's, it took a little bit of work a little bit of time to build it up but honestly that was just me wanting to get the most pigment I absolutely could out of the shadow but on its own even with that first pass I thought it showed up and was very pigmented then I took a bit of fusion and putting that I mean I took just a touch of this shadow and I'm putting it on the rest of my crease area there and look how pigmented it is. It takes absolutely no work to show up. The pigmentation y'all is intense. So anyway, following that up with this next shade infinite and I'm putting this right into my crease. I've already talked about the shade. I really do like it. I was wanting to go very lightly with this. I didn't want it to get too dark in my crease and overpower the shadows that I had in my crease because I wanted the intensity of those to pop. So I'm going in very gently just to add a little bit of depth. But anyway, after that, I took that black shade dark matter and I'm packing that on the outer corner and then taking my time to blend that into my crease. Now black matter, again, a thinner formula, but oh my goodness, so intensely pigmented. When you pack it on, it stamps itself down and it is so intensely black. You definitely wanna have a very careful hand when you go to blend it out, but it's not impossible to blend. It just takes a little bit more time and a little bit more care when you're going in to blend it out. So once I had that blended into my crease, I went ahead and cut my crease with a concealer because I wanted to do an all matte look, which I thought would be a lot of fun with this palette because there are so many mattes. So once I had applied that and kind of cut my crease, I tapped it out so it wasn't like too sticky wet and there wasn't too much product and then I'm taking that yellow shade life and I am packing that on the inner half of the lid shade there and just stamping it down to make sure it's nice and bright and pigmented I didn't want to use a white base because I kind of wanted to see how these shadows would you know work and appear on just a skin my skin tone so that's why I decided not to use a bright white but just keep in mind it could probably look even brighter if I did use a white but anyway once that was stamped down I went into the open mine once again that green and I'm placing that on the rest of the lid shade and just kind of taking some time to blend the two together. And when I blended into the yellow and into the black, it was a very easy transition to get. I just kind of went back and forth with the brushes until I liked the blend between all three shadows. Moving to my lower lash line, I took a little bit of that black once again and just blended it in. I'm sure it's getting so boring by now, but that's what I always do because I always put black on my waterline. But anyway, after that, I took a little bit of that very bright fuchsia pink and I am using that to blend out the black. And I really like the two of those blended. It was such a fun transition and then for my inner corner I decided to use something different and I took motive and I'm packing that on the inner corner and this is a beautiful shadow as well to use for an inner corner highlight but anyway that is going to be the final look um I, yeah I really like how this look turned out you guys know I always love a good all matte look and this definitely gave me that look that I was going for I really liked how all the mattes work together both blending together and packing on together there wasn't any patching with the mattes at all like getting funky on the lid and yeah a wear time uh perfection these are all mattes so that's definitely easier you know to last throughout the day but when I took my makeup off at night I could barely tell any kind of fading with the intensity of the color like it looked almost identical to what it did when I left my makeup table that morning it was fantastic 
All right, for my last look, I'm gonna go into that purple shade Curious there, and I'm packing that on my inner corner. This shade, again, a little bit thin, a little bit of a softer shadow, so if you're someone who doesn't like too much intensity, this is definitely one of those colors where if you went in very lightly, it could give you one of those almost like barely there, almost like a pastel type of purple, but I still got it to build up to the color that I was looking for. So moving on, I then went into Perplex, and I'm packing that on my outer half and just you know spending some time to mesh the blue and the purple together until I liked how it looked. This Perplex, again, it's just like the purple. I feel like these two colors could be used as pastels very easily because they're both, not only are they thin shadows, but they're both a little bit more lightly pigmented, I felt like, than some of the other more bright neon type of colors. Moving on from there, I took that really bright blue Inspire and I am putting that into my crease. In hindsight, I kind of wish that I would have put this down first and then done the other two on top of it just to help with the blending because it did take a little bit of extra time to kind of work this in because it's such an intense blue. And then with that other blue in the crease and the purple in my crease being so light, it just took a little bit more time to get the blend that I was going for than I think if I did it in the reverse order and did the darkest first and then blended the light on top. But hindsight is 2020. Moving on, I took Dark Matter that black and I'm packing that on the outer corner and I'm just gonna take some time I didn't want to go too overboard with the black so I'm going on very gently because I definitely wanted this eye look to shine with the blue and the purple I didn't really want it to get overtaken by the black so I'm going in very carefully and then I do go back over with the really bright blue inspire to kind of build it up that bright blue inspire I don't think I even said but it is such a nice blue like it is such an intense bright blue you could really make it shine a whole lot more than I did with this look since I use it mostly in the crease to just kind of deepen and intensify the lighter blue so I didn't really give that shade a chance to shine as much as I would have liked in this tutorial But it still is a gorgeous gorgeous bright blue that I definitely enjoyed using and kind of wish I would have used it in a different way to really make that shadow shine more in an eye look because it's just so very bright and beautiful for my shimmers I decided to go into that entity again and pack that on pretty much the entire lid I just took it all over the lid and as you can see as I'm packing it on it really does shine I've said this already, but I was really pleased with the entity It was one of those surprising shimmers because I honestly went into this palette not expecting to like it that much but by as you can see as I was using it I really did come to like this shadow it's so very beautiful it's got such a soft pastel vibe to it but it shines and has so much sparkle it's gorgeous but anyway to kind of tie in this look I decided to take inspire and pack it on the outer corner and kind of pack it over the shimmer now it wasn't really to like turn the shimmer blue but I wanted them to mesh so that you still got the sparkle all over the lid but there was a little bit of blue in the shimmer because there isn't any blue type of shimmer in this palette so I'm kind of trying to get the vibe of a blue shimmer if that makes sense and this worked really well I got the look that I was going for fairly easily moving on past that I'm taking a little bit of that white and I am just cleaning up my brow bone just to make sure I didn't go too overboard with the light blue and the purple in my crease you know take it up too high and then for the lower lash line I'm taking that black dark matter once again and then to smoke it out I'm taking that perplex shade and I am smoking that all uh, into the black on my lower lash line just to make it nice and smooth no harsh lines that sort of thing you guys I'm a, I feel like a broken record at this point but anyway that shade blended that black out so beautifully for my inner corner I went ahead and sprayed it first this time but I took quantum and I'm packing that on my inner corner and the spraying definitely helped It's a beautiful shadow but it is so crumbly however spraying was the way to go because it definitely helped it behave and stick more it was just easier to apply it was still difficult to pick up in the pan because it is so crumbly but it went on the eye a lot better spraying it and yeah that is gonna be the finished look that is the last look that I created it turned out really nice and I love the mix of the blue and the purple I think that's always a fun mix to do on the eye but yeah overall very happy with it again wear time again I feel like a broken record and I don't even know if this is helpful but wear time was great I didn't notice any weird creasing I didn't notice any weird fading there was hardly any wear up into my brow bone I was very happy overall with how this looked and yeah that is the final look that I'm showing you guys using the Mize Cosmetics Perception Palette All right, so those are all the looks per usual. I love to hear which one is your favorite. It's so hard for me to pick a favorite, especially with this palette. I have been so inspired every time I open this palette. I'm like, oh, I could put this together. I could put that together. So I really can't pick a favorite. Let me know if you're able to. I feel like all the looks are really fun, very vibrant. And even you know, with this being so colorful, I was still able to get a very neutral look. I definitely wanted to throw that in there in case you are someone who you know sticks to more of the neutrals. They do have enough neutrals in here where I feel like I got a very, at least for me personally, I thought it was a pretty neutral look. But yeah, let's go ahead and move over to the overall thoughts 
and impressions on this palette and kind of summary of my review. And as I get into that, I'll also just put over the screen me swatching this palette live on camera so you guys can see as I chat. But yeah, as we get into it, I do want to say that I'm not familiar with the influencer that she collaborated with or that might have collaborated with, so I'm sorry that I didn't say anything in the beginning. I should have addressed it in the beginning of this video, but I'm not super familiar with her. I'm following her now. She does gorgeous looks. She is absolutely beautiful. All the looks she did with this palette are absolutely gorgeous. She did a great job putting the color story together. It's got a lot of very fun aspects to it. A lot of, like I said in the beginning, I'm just so very inspired every time I open this. Each time I did a look, and even though I've done five looks, I still want to continue on and do more looks, and I think that's always a good sign when it comes to a palette that you open it and you still, you're just so excited to do more. And I think another aspect to this palette that I also find very unique and special and just inspiring for me personally is that there's so many bright colors, but there's also a good amount of deep colors and not just a black, there's a deep green and a deep red. And that gives you the ability to add lots of depth to these colors. So if you're someone who doesn't want to go all out and super vibrant with their colors, they can blend in a lot of these deeper tones and really get a lot of depth and just almost subdue it a little bit. I definitely noticed that was something I was able to do is to, you know, smoke out my outer corner, but also bring that dark color up and around and mix it into those very vibrant colors and kind of tone it down so it's not like neon-ish in your face, that type of thing. As I've already said in the tutorial, the brighter color mattes are relatively sheer, like sheerer than I like them to be. I wish there was a little bit more intensity, but as you guys saw throughout the tutorials, if I focus more on packing it on and then lightly blending after it was packed on, I didn't notice any any like sheerness or thinness to the shadows, but that was definitely just a learning curve as I started diving into these, specifically the brighter tones. I didn't really notice it too much with the deeper tones, but these more vibrant, very bold colors, I felt like looked a little sheer if I kind of just blended them in. I really wanted to pack them on to get the intensity and just the, the thickness, I guess you could say, that I like in a shadow. So definitely something I noticed overall with this palette is that the brighter tones looked a little thin. But yeah, overall the shimmers I really did like. I was not a fan of Phantom, this or no, Quantum. Sorry, Phantom, Quantum. This one, it, as I've already kind of gone into it, it's very flaky and whatnot, but besides that, they're very nice shimmers. The shimmers are workable. You know, not all of the formulas are my absolute favorite, but they're very nice and they add to the palette and I do appreciate them being in there. But you guys know me, I tend to be where the mattes are. That's kind of what the focus is whenever I look at a new palette. So for me, with this palette being so heavy on the mattes, I had a really great time with it. And overall, I think it was a great mix. Like, I don't know if I would have ever seen this palette to put it together or I could have ever put this palette together, but having it here, having it in my hands and creating looks with it, it's very inspiring. It's very colorful, but you have those deeper tones and those neutrals that you can stay fairly safe in, I feel like. And it's also really nice size. Like, it has a lot of shadows, but it's not too incredibly large. The decoration, the packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's on the front and the back. I didn't even mention this in the beginning, but it is so beautifully done. I will say I do wish the perception was maybe just, I don't know. I like how it is just kind of a phantom where you have to hit it just right in order to see it. I think that's a cool aspect. However, when I'm actually using it, it is a little hard even in person to be like, okay, what is it called? Okay, perception. It's an element to the palette. I do appreciate that they did that because it makes it definitely very unique and pretty and eye-catching, but it's something practically using it a couple times I had to pick it up and kind of move it around to figure out what the name was. But yeah, that's pretty much my review on this. I think it's a really nicely done palette. It's a really well done collaboration. It's beautifully pr made. It's beautifully presented. It's got a really nice sleeve that I didn't even show you guys until now. I'm so bad with sleeves. But it's got a really, you know, nice feeling like that velvety type of feeling. Not only the palette, but also the sleeve. And I like that they kind of flip-flopped it with this all being black and then the words are in the same color as this palette. So anyway, okay, camera died, of course, almost at the end. But anyway, I was just saying that I'll probably end up pulling this a couple more times before I review it in my next palette palooza, just because, like I said, I really did enjoy using it. I was very inspired with this palette. So stay tuned for that and you can see all of the looks. I always include all the looks that I create with the palette whenever I do my palette palooza, so you can see any more additional looks. But hopefully seeing these five looks that I did today was helpful for you guys to be able to get some inspiration or just be able to see, like I said, all of these shadows used on my eyes. So let me know your thoughts with that. Like I said, I typically do three looks, one palette, and call it a day, but I just felt inspired to do a little bit more since I did have more time and I wasn't able to do a first impressions with this video. So I was like, hey, you know what? I have the time. I'm not going to be able to upload it till next week. So let's do a couple more looks in a three looks, one palette plus review and do five looks, one palette plus review. So if you enjoyed the additional looks, uh, definitely let me know that down below. And don't forget to let me know if you like to see this compared and swatched next to other palettes in my collection that are similar and also done on the eyes with the palette that 
that's the most similar just to see if you have a previous palette if you need this palette in your collection and if it'll add anything new to what you already have in your collection so let me know that down below in the comments but that is going to do it for this video and this review of the perception palette from Midas and the basic B. I hope you guys found it helpful and enjoyable and just fun to sit back and watch me create these looks let me know your thoughts down below on this collaboration and this palette in general do you like the color story were you interested do you know the influencer I always like to hear those sort of things you can follow me over on Instagram I'm Lady Katie 92 over there and I upload something about every day I took like two weeks off when my family was in town but typically I'm uploading over there about every day so you can get more content see more looks see more stuff with this palette I always try to do at least one tutorial over there as well so check me out Lady Katie 92 if you'd like to follow me over there and with all that said that's going to do it for me in this video thank you guys so very much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video bye guys